Welcome to Dr. Warwick's podcast channel. Warwick is a practicing cardiologist and author with a passion for improving care by helping patients understand their heart health through education. Warwick believes educated patients get the best health care. Discover and understand the latest approaches and technology in heart care and how this might apply to you or someone you love. Hi, my name is Dr. Warwick Bishop, and I'd like to welcome you to my podcast and video cast station. And today I have a special guest, Guy Leach, who you may know as an Australian and internationally ranked paddler and Ironman. Hi, Guy. Welcome. How are you? How are you, Doc? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Look, um, I was particularly interested, and I think some of the listeners will be particularly interested in just having a bit of background and understanding for what it's like the journey of being a professional sportsman, where did you start? So I was um, probably a similar story to a lot of swimmers that have done well over the years. I know that um, Dawn Fraser has said the same thing, Susie O'Neill, a bunch of other famous swimmers, um, in that I I was a a kid that was basically, you know, if I got a cold, I'd turn into bronchitis and... We'd off to the doctors and the doctor, uh, this one doctor, when I was probably seven years of age, said to my mum, listen, let's get him in the pool and get him swimming and let's get his lungs a bit stronger and that may help this whole process of cold turning into bronchitis. So anyway, so I I hadn't swum up until then. I jumped in the pool. I was probably close to eight years of age, I think. And look, I got lucky, funnily enough, with the whole swimming thing more so than any other sport I've done because I went and had like a learn to swim lesson at the local <clears throat> beach um, in the harbour in Sydney and the instructor apparently said to my mum, uh, you know, you, 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 why have you got him here? He knows how to do all four strokes and this is a learn to swim class, not a training group. So, you know, so I, I was just lucky that I was – found something that I could do straight away. It was really weird. I just felt really comfortable. I I just remember mum saying to me that you're not meant to do that. And I'm like, all oh, right. So they threw me into the pool three days a week in a, in a training group when I was eight. And I progressed so quickly in the pool that the swimming coach there said, let's get Guy to enter the state titles, New South Wales state titles. And um, I had to go to a local carnival and I was good at breaststroke and I ended up winning the, the race, went off to the state titles and did the 100 breaststroke. And it's, there's a few things in my life I remember and there's most that I don't, right? But this one day I do remember because I swam the two laps of the pool. I, I finished first beat all the other kids that were the best in New South Wales. And the time I did broke the record, the Australian record for the fastest time ever set by a nine-year-old or under nine-year-old for the two laps. And the feeling for me of winning and the feeling of, I suppose, doing the training and just the, that sort of weird feeling of being so good was something that I, I loved. And that was a start for me. So for me, progressing through the ranks of sport and getting better and better and better was based on that day. It was a discovery day. It was a day of, oh, if you do the training and you train hard and do what you do, you get a result. And unbeknownst to me, I was good at something. And that was the start, man. Was swimming in the family guy? Had you had parents or? Sim- no, my, my, my mum was more tennis um, that sort of ball sport. My dad was a good tennis player and squash player. He was um, an A-grade tennis and squash player. He was a mile running champion, so couldn't swim much at all. You'd say he was an, an average swimmer, funnily enough. And um, he did a year with St Kilda in Melbourne. So we were born in Melbourne. Parents split up when I was about four, and my brother and I moved to Sydney with our mum. And Dad stayed in Melbourne, so that was that was the start. And 
you know, I, I was very fortunate that, you know, in some ways that we moved to Sydney because that sort of jump into the water and the fact I loved it and I just felt like it was home was something that I've enjoyed my whole life. So, you know, I sort of, I did the swimming thing until I was, uh, until I was 17. I, I, I got really, life's funny, you know, in that you, you, you get opportunities given to you and, um, and, and I went into a swimming pool that I, I call like a, a place of excellence. And so the, the, the squad that I went into, the, the coach at the time ended up being the head swimming coach for the Australian Olympic team. So he was like the number one swim coach in the country. Wow. And it was a six-lane indoor 25-metre pool. And you started, you got invited into the senior squad. And at the age of 12, I got into this senior squad. And anyone that got to lane six and the coach decided whether you went from lane one to lane two and, and up, um, if you made lane six, anyone that was in lane six was getting on a plane going to the Olympic Games as they qualified. They were going to the Commonwealth Games. They are going to the World Championships and everything else where you represented your country. So for me as a 12-year-old that rocked into this pool, it was very clear that if I could get to lane six, I was representing Australia and making a, an, a, an Australian swim team. So for me, um, my goal and my journey was very clear at that age. And so it wasn't muddled, it wasn't diluted, and all my energy went into that and it was a very powerful thing. And you know, at the time, you don't think a lot about it when you're that age and you're just doing what you're doing. But, um, you know, we, I, I was introduced at the age of 12 to, you know, log book journals where, you know, the coach would say, Write down what you did for the day in training. Um, write down any observations. Um, at the end of the week, when you finished the the you know the eight sessions or whatever it was that we had to do at that, at that age, you you give yourself a mark out of ten for the effort you thought you put in and any comments around that, and you gave the book back to the coach, Coach Gathercock, and in that book. There were goals at the front. So of the six events you were going to compete at, at the Australian titles that year, um, you had to put down what your personal best time was in one column. In the next column, in, in six months' time, the time that you thought you could achieve, and then the next column was the time that you thought you could do in 12 months' time. And, you know, imagine a 12-year-old kid getting given this book and that was the assignment to start with was, to come up with these times. Now, it wasn't just a case of writing the times down. The coach then, um, he, he would negotiate with you based on the times you put. If he felt the time was too easy for you to achieve, then, then it was a discussion with the head Olympic swim coach and a 12-year-old on why I thought that time was fair and the time that he gave that was two seconds harder was more appropriate. So once we signed off on these, I had to memorise into the tenth of a second, and I'd get asked on pool deck, "Guy, hundred butterfly, in a year's time, what's the time that you said that we, we agreed on that you you would you you'd try to achieve?" And I had to say, "63 seconds point five as an example. And if I didn't get it right, well, you got punished. And so at the end of the week, that log book went back to coach, and coach would look at the log books of the kids in the senior squad. And come Monday morning, he'd give those back to you. Now, to give you an example of, of just this environment that I was in, um, you know, the first 12 weeks of this process that I was doing, um, I'd give myself 9 out of 10 because I was training hard, you know, and I was putting a good effort in. And my coach was coming in at 6s and 7s on the effort he thought I was putting in. But he'd say, he'd say why? You got a half-point deduction on Wednesday afternoon in the kick set, your technique dropped off, half a point deduction. On Thursday afternoon, when you did the hypoxic main set, you didn't do it properly, half a point deduction. On Saturday morning, when you were meant to be at pool deck at 4.50 a.m. to stretch 10 minutes before we got in the water, 
you turned up at 453, one point deduction. That went on for 12 weeks. And so by the 12th week, I've been battered down enough and I'd realised that maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was and I was coming in at sevens and it matched up to coach. So that's just a, that's just a small example of the, the culture and just the, the, the type of environment that I was in that I took for granted. I went, I went to school to rest and I turned up to training to be the best in the world at what I did. And, and that was my mindset at the age of 12. And, you know, we'd see once a week someone would, would, would know in advance when they had to get up in front of the whole squad and swim their pet event on pool deck in training. So, you know, one of the guys from lane six have to get up and do the 100 breaststroke in front of the whole group and there'd be 50 of us on the side screaming for that person. I saw people break world records in training, Commonwealth records. I saw personal best times, Australian records. So I believed as a kid that if you're in that pool and you did what you were told to do and you did it right, then you'd be phenomenal. And, um, and that was my education. So... You know, when you say where did it all start and how did I become a professional athlete um, and, you know, and and why I could win world titles and do the things that I did, uh, that was because of that pool. And by the time I was 17, I'd spent five years in that pool. I remember the first time coach got me out of the pool after about a year of being in lane one. And I've been training the house down, doing everything right, and... I thought, this is it. This is my moment. I'm going to lane two. Because I've seen other people go up the lanes. You know, you see it every month or two. Someone would get put up a lane or someone would leave because the workload and the intensity of training was too much for, for kids that realised they couldn't hack it and they just pull up and leave. Um, and I remember um, Coach said, I've got, I've got to, I need to, you stay back, guy. I need to talk to you. And um, he... I thought, I'm going to lane two. And he looked at me and he could tell that. And he said, oh, God, it's not about lane two. And straight away I thought, I'm going to lane three. I'm the first person in the history of this pool that's <laughs> bypassing a lane. And because I'm going that well, I'm jumping up to lane three. And it wasn't about that either. So that was, that was what I lived through, you know. And so by the time I was 17, I made lane six. I represented Australia in the pool overseas. And, and then the Ironman bug hit me and that was the swap over from being someone that was a swimmer to then being a surf Ironman competitor and a full-time athlete, yeah. Guy, that's almost a, um, a natural close of a chapter. We've actually been talking, uh, and I've been listening actually with you sharing for over 10 minutes already. So what I might do is just uh, put a break in this uh, call this part one, and if you're happy, we'll regroup and do a part two. Of course. So uh, for those listening, I hope uh, you're enjoying this story. It sounds like an amazing uh, discipline. A, uh, the accountability and the personal growth from those sort of journals is enormous for a 12-year-old. Um, I'm looking forward to coming back and hearing more of your story, Guy. Thank you for that. For those listening, uh, till next time, take care and bye for now. You have been listening to another podcast from Dr. Warwick. Visit his website at drwarwickbishop.com for the latest news on heart disease. If you love this podcast, feel free to leave us a review.